Hi, this is part two in a pocket multimeter shootout. I'll link in part one up here in a little YouTube card thing and also down below and at the end of this video if you haven't seen it because that's where I did uh, teardowns of 14 different pocket multimeters and there are the rejects up there. Um, some of them aren't necessarily bad, but they just didn't represent, um, you know, they didn't have any clear reason why you would buy them over. Um, what effectively, well, basically these ones here were I thought were the uh, pick of the bunch, but I'll include the Ampro PM51A, even though we had a little issue with the Bryman uh, branded version of this in terms of uh, range switch uh, contacts. So we're just going to take a closer look at uh, these six meters here and uh, just see how they perform. And I expect all of these to perform admirably. Uh, in the previous video, the Aning AN8203 is the one that won the uh, $10 shootout in terms of uh, build quality and uh, functionality and things like that. Um, the Unit 10A won the $20 uh, class shootout and the Sanwar uh, PM3 won the, uh, you know, like $40 kind of, you know, the higher priced uh, category. The Amprobe is, is a pretty decent unit, but uh, it doesn't have uh, capacitance mode. So just take that into account. And if you want the absolute best in terms of uh, cat rating and um, which one has the best uh, case, the um, Sanwa PM300, which full disclosure, I actually sell on my website and there's a reason that I sell it. But I think, yeah, Sanwa is pretty much uh, the pick of this bunch if cost isn't a concern. So let's just run some basic tests on these and see how they compare. I won't show you all up close, but in terms of uh, manuals, um, the Sanwars include like just big multi-language uh, sheets like this. Uh, by far the best uh, manuals are on both the Amprobes. I've lost uh, the PM51A, but you can uh, download that and it's just as uh, comprehensive and yeah, it is in multiple languages, but uh, yeah, they, they kind of have the win because they have like operational diagrams and stuff like that, if that matters, but meh. But I've got to say that the Uni T1 is okay too, no worries whatsoever. It's only in English. I guess if you get it in a different country, it has a different language. I don't know. Diode range test. We'll see if it whites up a uh, white Cree star lead here. Yep. Lights up, 2.5 volts. As always, uh, you don't expect the test current uh, to be the same on these. Note, the Sanwa PM3 does not light that up at all, so it doesn't have the range. The Amprobe lights it up. Doesn't display the uh, reading, but you can see the bar graph. You can see the bar graph go there, so it at least indicates. But it's over the full-scale display range. The Ampro bar slash Bryman PM51 can't do it. The Uni T can't do it. But the Aneg, no problems. And you can see why some of them do it like this uh, Sanwa here is because the full scale maximum voltage is only 1.5 volts. So that's not enough compliance voltage to light a white LED um, or even a red one for that matter. Basic ohms accuracy test. That Amprobe slash uh, Bryman is the closest one so far, but you can see that they're all within a couple of counts. They're all well within spec. The Aning is the only one that's almost bang on, but it doesn't matter. I mean, they're all within a couple of counts. Do it again using uh, precisely one meg and near enough. Near enough. Near enough. Bang on. Near enough low. And again, near enough. Oh, bang on. And a one volt uh, precision reference, PM300's bang on. Samwa PM3's are, uh, you know, four to five counts out. Uh, Amprobe is uh, one count above. So yeah, still within spec, um, but a little bit out. But hey, we only have a sample size of one. It's good enough for a pocket meter, no worries. 10 volts, not a problem. 100 millivolts, no worries. Obviously they're calibrating this on the 100 millivolt range and then uh, relying on the uh, tolerance of the internal uh, resistors for that one. So you can see that the Amprobe's a little bit out there. Sanwa's a bang on. The Amprobe Unity and Aning on 100 millivolts. Let's take that up to uh, 10 volts. There we go. Still all oh, uh, six counts out on the Amprobe slash Bryman, but eh, still within spec and one volt. So yeah, the worst out of that. But as I said, sample size of one uh, is the Amprobe, Amprobe slash uh, Bryman. And 100 millivolts AC at 400 hertz. 
and 100 millivolts AC at 1 kilohertz. You can see that the uh, AM probe and the UNI-T don't have a millivolts uh, range. They've only got the volts. 1 volt range at 1 kilohertz. The a -ning, of course, is uh, true RMS. So these ones are beginning to roll off. And back down to 400 hertz, and you can see these two improve now. But this one's still bang on. 10 volts AC, 400 hertz. 100 volts AC, 400 hertz. And 240 volts AC, 400 hertz. That's not mains 50 hertz, that's 400 hertz. Okay, I'm going to switch on 240 volts, uh, 400 hertz onto the ohms range. Here we go. So this is not hooked up to the mains. This is my uh, reference generator. Whoop, something overloaded. Nah, can't do it. Oh, I saw the battery lead come on there. Uh-oh, looks like we've killed the a -ning. Oops. And the other two have recovered, reading voltage now, but yeah, the A-Neg, we killed it. Wah, 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 wah. Okay, we've got 100 millivolts uh, AC, 400 hertz, and uh, the amp probe's a little bit low. Let's switch it down to 50 hertz. And we're at actually uh, 60 hertz now, and yep, she's performing better, so it looks like this one might have some roll-off. 1 volt RMS, 400 hertz, and the PM300, by the way, is uh, true RMS. It's only one of the two um, in this group that are. 10 volts, 400 hertz. 100 volts, 400 hertz. Again, the uh, Samwa PM3, I'm not sure if I've just got a particular unit or not, but it's it's not... Some of the um, specs, it's not been out of spec, but in terms of, like, uh, counts, it's probably the one of the highest in the group. It depends on the range and the function, though. But, as I said, still within spec, so not a problem. 240 volts AC, 400 hertz. Okay, I've got them all on uh, ohms range now. I'm going to apply 240 volts at 400 hertz. Here we go. Oh, hey, battery. <laughs> Battery uh, indicator coming on. I can't know. It's overloading my reference standard. But I'm not killing any of them. I'm certainly, uh, I'm certainly pulsing the 240 volts on there, that's for sure. And there's going to be some overshoot on that, and that's at 400 hertz. And they've all come good on the uh, voltage range, no worries. Let's try the ohms. Yep, PM300 is fine. PM3 is fine. And the amp probe's fine. So all of them survived um, pretty much what you'd expect because they're all reputable brands, proper, uh, properly rated. The amp probe is UL listed. The Samwas are uh, tested to exactly the same standard but in-house. So no worries. And the Uni-T uh, survived that test, no worries. And the amp probe survived, no worries. And by the way, um, all of them have like acceptable auto range speed. Out of these three, the uh, amp probe is probably... The, well, it definitely is the fastest, well, I think it is the fastest, and, but they're all pretty acceptable. My 10 nanofarad uh, capacitance standard, oh, Samwa PM3, almost bang on. And of course the Ampro Bar 78C doesn't have capacitance, so can't do much about that. Oh, there we go, we're over. 2 nanofarads over because, oh, that's actually a fair bit out, isn't it? But this doesn't even have a relative mode, right? So we can't actually null that out at all, and it's still well over. Is it still within spec? No, I don't, whoa. Ugh, 0.1 nano residual. Still, yeah, that's almost bang on when you take that into account. And of course the A-Neng is now dead, so I can't measure the capacitance. Oh. So I haven't really gone to town on the test here, just done some basic stuff, but it's good enough to get an indication that, but my conclusion uh, pretty much remains the same from the previous uh, teardown video part one. I think the best overall is still the uh, Samwa, just the form factor, the build quality, the functionality, and the price, and the slim uh, wallet form factor. Um, the AMP probe, as you can see, lacks the capacitance uh, mode. It does a reasonable job, um, but it does have the bar graph. So, you know, so if you're a bar graph fanboy, um, you know, it, it does the business. It's UL listed. I, I don't know about the AMP probe pocket meter Bryman. I don't 
particularly find it that great, especially considering it doesn't actually have a case to put your leads in. Um, so I don't really think it's a good pocket multimeter in that respect in terms of, you know, um, being able to fold it all up and slip it in your pocket. Those leads are just going to get in the way. Um, if you want bargain basement, the Uni-T um, 10A, not hugely more expensive than the Aning, which absolutely failed on uh, mains on the ohms. Um, Uni-T are doing fairly well these days on input uh, protection, if they haven't always uh, done so. And that one's um, quite reasonable down at like the 20 odd uh, dollar range. And of course, the uh, PM300 performs pretty well across the board, and also I think it's got the best uh, case. But it's also the most expensive, and it's the thickest uh, as well. So, you know, it, it's all a trade-off. Um, but overall, as a uh, meter that slips in your pocket, I still think the Samwar uh, PM3 is the go. I'd actually like to get several of these and measure the uh, uh, accuracy across a number of uh, spread of them. But it's still, all of them are still uh, within spec, no problems whatsoever. So as always, there's always a mix of uh, trade-offs of various ranges and whether or not they can let and test LEDs if that's important to you or whether or not they can do this and that. The level of the uh, continuity uh, you know, buzzer, the response uh, rate, they're all pretty good. The build quality, um, you know, all the, uh, all the, like the Samwars probably have the best uh, probes, very nice gold plated, they feel good quality, they've got the rated cables on them, but the amp probes are no uh, slouch in that respect either, I don't know, they're a bit dicky though, look, I don't know, I did, yeah, I, <laughs> but that's it, like, it's a, they're quite reasonable meters, so, you know, they'll all do the business, let's just throw out the A-neg, unless you have to get, like, a $10 meter, um, you know, any one of these is probably going to do the job for you. And the two amp probes uh, basically match the Samwar uh, PM3 at, at two or three times per second. And the Uni-T may be the slowest out of the bunch. I think it's two and a half, two to two and a half times per second, something like that. But they're all reasonable. PM300 is the winner in that, though. So there you go. I hope you liked that uh, follow-up review video. If you did, if you haven't seen the uh, original one, I'll link it in at the end of this video somewhere here. And if you liked it, please give it a big thumbs up. And as always, there'll be endless discussions down in the comments below or over on the EEV blog forum thread for every video. If you don't know, there is a discussion forum thread for every single video over on the EEV blog forum. YouTube comments aren't that great for like, you know, in-depth <laughs> community discussion on stuff. So the best place to do it is the EEV blog forum. But anyway, I hope you like that. Catch you next time. Thank <laughs> you.